Today we'll be demonstrating the Skynet Drone Defense Shotgun Shells. Are these shells just a bunch of hype or will they actually prevent you from becoming a victim? I contacted the company that manufactures these shells. Yes, the same company that makes pre-seasoned Cajun barbecue duck shot. I asked them if they would like to send us some shells to demonstrate and they never replied to me. At almost $20 for a pack of three, I didn't really think this video was ever going to happen. And then out of the blue comes our hero, John Kupta, who contacted me on Facebook and wanted to see these things demonstrated. And he paid a lot of money for this test, so thank you, John. I would have been tickled pink with one pack, but he actually sent two packs, had them mailed to his house, and then forwarded them onto me. I offered to fully reimburse him, and he just... You know, he was just happy donating to this cause. So, thank you, John. All right, on the package, we got this artwork. We got a guy who looks like nothing fancy defending his mountaintop from this evil drone. And one interesting note here is the deployed Skynet here shows six little weights on the six individual strings. In reality, there's only five, and I'm not really sure how they got that wrong. But maybe that's an earlier version or something. But looking closely at the shell here, you can see that there's five little metallic segments. Each uh, segment is made out of a, a metal called zerillium, and it's probably a fancy word for pot metal, but it's, uh, it's some kind of alloy that they developed, and they use it in some other rounds that they make. And they're just using a Fiocchi primed hole. Um, you probably noticed the kind of mangled up roll crimp that they put on this. I'm not sure how that really passed muster, but they packed it and shipped it anyway. Now in order to give you an idea how much the payload weighs, the projectile and the string and all that, we'll, we'll tear it out with an empty shell and that sucker weighs in at 1.81 ounces. That's quite a heavy load. And that's over 51 grams if you're confused what an ounce is. Now the instruction sheet that was included with the package, uh, just mostly safety stuff, not information like, do you need to uh, shoot these through a rifle choke or a rifle barrel or a cylinder bore, anything like that. But this does give you an idea of how much you're supposed to lead it, not how much you're supposed to hold over or anything like that. But it does show that it, these have a range from 10 feet to 300 feet or 100 yards. And you can also see at the bottom there, these have a bullet speed of 1,000 feet per second. Now, it's great you have that chart, but do you really know the difference between a drone at 90 yards or 80 yards? And can you really tell the speed? Probably not. So really, to become proficient with these, you'd have to spend a lot of time practicing and shooting a whole lot of those $7 shells. And what targets are you going to use? Are you going to use actual quadcopters as your target? Good afternoon, Tau Flater folks. Officer Greg back here on another bright, uh, windy, windy California day. Hey, today we are going to try the Skynet ground-to-air anti-drone round. Uh, the idea for this came about while we were shooting your uh, bolo round ideas. And uh, Jeff has crafted some jazzy Tennessee drones here out of uh, cardboard straws, a little hot glue. Uh, guest shooter today, however, will be uh, Kyle the Cop. Step on in here, Kyle. How's it going? Kyle from a local agency is going to be uh, pulling a trigger for us today, so let's give it a try with a Skynet. See how it goes. It was very windy, and I'll spare you the agony of the wind noise. Anyway, Kyle is explaining that he's going to shoot the Skynet round at a range of 25 yards at a fixed target. Oh, something shot down there. Now these were shot through a rifle choke, which is supposed to cause the little weights to spread out. Looks like we have good deployment. And there it goes. It's going pretty slow, too. I thought these would go a little faster than this. He definitely hit it because we see it move, uh, but we don't see any damage to it. Remember, this is just flimsy cardboard, not, uh, you know, ABS plastic or anything like that. But we don't see any string uh, tangling around it or anything like that either. Okay, number four shot, whenever you're ready. Okay, this is the same target, same distance, but we're using number four shot. 
as you can see the coverage is quite good you can see that Kyle knows how to shoot <laughs> okay let's look at the damage as you can see there's no string damage or anything like that all the damage to our cardboard target is from the number four shot and uh, I would say that would have effectively taken down this drone That seemed to hit it. It seemed to smack it. Yeah. Okay, this shot was still 25 yards away. As you can see, he shot a little bit high, but because those strings spread out so far, in a radius of about five feet, I believe is what they say, and he's still able to clip a couple of the propellers off of it, which would have definitely taken down this drone. Okay, military buck, double odd, hit it. That was a little bit better impact, come on. Okay, numerous hits with the buckshot. There's one hit from the Skynet round, but most of the damage is from the buckshot. Now buckshot may seem like a bit of an overkill, but it is a short range round. It has an effective range of only about 50 yards. It could probably reach out a little further, but it's going to spread quite a bit. Oh, okay. Now, this one didn't deploy very cleanly. We didn't have that five foot area of sky that it's supposed to be covering. And uh, just flew a little wonky. And. Uh, the damage to the drone was very minimal. Now we were going to set the target further and further back, but we had so much trouble at only 25 yards, we didn't go any further than that. Now mind you, these projectiles were going about 75 yards, and several of them snarled in this tree behind our target. Now this tree was actually over the water and Kyle bravely climbed up there and recovered one of them. And the one he recovered only had four of the five weights remaining. But look how uh, sophisticated those weights are. They're pretty complex. It appears that the string they use is uh, probably a Kevlar construction type string. And as you can see, there really wasn't much damage to the, our cardboard drone. Damn. Now in this shot, we used double odd buck with the flight control wad. The flight control wad is no gimmick. It definitely extends the range of double odd buck, almost doubles it. Now using that flight control wad, the pellets stay inside that wadding a little bit longer so you have a little tighter grouping and looks like most of those pellets hit dead center. Okay, out of a smooth board, just, just a cylinder board, let's see how that performs. Hit it! <laughs> In the tree again. Same spot. Is it? Hit it! The manufacturer does say that these are compatible with a cylinder or improved bore. The end result was we just didn't get a very good spread and it was just sheer luck that nothing hit the drone. So I'm not going to put any blame on Greg because I know he's a good shot. And that was only 25 yards. Okay, long beard, 25 yards. No, Jesus. <laughs> hey, that was destructive. <laughs> All right, so we found out that this was a weaponized Chinese drone because we found a sharpened chopstick <laughs> hooked to the bottom. So uh, everyone watch out. Never forget. Put your eye out with that thing. Now the long beard is a beast of a shell. It's a three inch shell with one and three quarters ounce of shot. Now the shot itself is copper colored and all that white material is called buffer which 
kind of prevents the lead shot from being deformed while it's being accelerated down the barrel. This is the spec sheet on the Skynet round, and they say that they recommend a rifle choke. Most of our shots were done with this rifle choke, and that just gives the projectile a little spin right before it leaves the barrel. It actually works. Hit it! Okay, this shot we put a fresh target up, but only put it 10 yards away. Let's see if we can finally get some damage done to one of these cardboard drones. Now these things decelerate so quickly that by the time you're 25, 30, 40 yards out there, there's not much energy left to do any damage. It's a high dollar Chinese drone there, but it's a real one, so... People can't say much. So this is the actual scientific test. Then. Yeah, yeah. Okay, whatever you're ready. <laughs> Little piece of string stuck on it. <laughs> kind of wrapped around there. It's actually wrapped around the motor a little bit. Once again, we're at 10 yards away. But we're not shooting cardboard, we're shooting actual plastic now. And look how this drone just kind of laughs at this round. It just shears off the strings. No real damage. One string, for whatever reason, was left behind. So, you be the judge. Hey, how about a boot? <laughs> <laughs> You would have hit if you knew how to aim, but you got to practice that boot a little bit. Okay, number four shot. Whenever you're ready, you have, you have to figure out how to time it. Now, one important thing to say here is it's not legal to shoot down a drone, even if it's hovering over your house. That's the crazy thing here. Okay, now, if you could get away with shooting down a drone with a shotgun, would you use a $7 anti-drone shell? Now what about those long beard? Those are about two bucks a, a shell. Buckshot's about a dollar a shell. Birdshot's about 25 cents a shell. And for the price of one, just one, anti-drone shell, you could buy a 25 round box of birdshot. Now since it's illegal for civilians to shoot down drones over their house and over their property, who are they marking these rounds to? Well, from what my understanding, they're trying to sell them to the Air Force, also the Border Patrol, and since contraband has been delivered to prisons via drone, well, maybe uh, correctional officers may be using these things. And these are agencies with big budgets, apparently, if they can afford $7 shells. Once again, I want to thank John Kukta for supplying these shells to us to test out. We never would have done it otherwise. Also, thank you, Patreons, for your generous support. And thank you for watching. Good day.